Today we bring to you live a demonstration of the Translos 7XE fume extractor connected to the ClearO2 fume extraction unit. This technology allows the welder to weld and remove the fume directly at the source. Let's go ahead and start the demonstration. I'm just going to start my thing again. We have to be ready. Okay. You might be a little bit nervous here. Yeah, no, don't, don't worry. Just, just forget about the camera. Okay. okay. I'm talking to you. I'm good. All right. So, Glenn, I'm Duncan Beaumont from Travis Canada Industries, uh, based out of Woodstock, Ontario. Um, today, we brought the fume extraction equipment with us, um, which is the 780 fume extraction gun. It's connected to the Clear 2 fume extraction unit. The goal here is for us to provide you with a piece of equipment that you can continue to weld with and you don't have to worry about so much about your health and safety. When you weld it will remove the smoke or a good portion of it. Now uh, Translus has been around for about 59 years. We've primarily been building regular make tip guns for a long time and we've launched the fume extraction gun in the last uh, six years. We um, want to show you before we start welding a few of the features on the gun and then on the unit. So today I have hooked up this gun. Um, a few of the things we hear in the marketplace are we hear three negativities. The first one is the weight. People say oh these are going to be heavy. So what we actually do is, is, and we'll do this afterwards, but we'll have you hold this gun in one hand and hold your existing gun, regular gun, in the other hand. We've made this gun to the same weight or less than a regular gun, and uh, we think we've eliminated the weight concern. The second uh, concern that we hear in the industry is ergonomics. How is this going to feel after eight hours of use on my wrist or my arm, etc.? So we've, we've built in a few features. Uh, the number one thing we spent a lot of time on was the handle. So we spent a lot of um, time on the ergonomics of this handle so that after eight hours it still feels comfortable. The second thing that we've built in is this 360 swivel neck. Where the hose attaches to the gun, neck of the gun, this will actually swivel 360 degrees. This is a very nice ergonomic feature. The other part that we've built in for ergonomics is the uh, flexible neck technology in the first two feet of this hose. We can bend this hose back on ourselves like this, over your shoulder, uh, double knot it, and you won't affect the wire. The liner is still good, the wire is still good. The first two feet of this hose is very flexible. The third uh, question we get or concern that we get asked a lot in the industry is how do you pull out the, sh the uh, smoke, the fume from the welding process, but you don't pull out the shielding gas um, and cause a porosity issue? Well, actually, that's the main uh, secret to this gun is the nozzle. I'm going to pull this nozzle off and show you it. This nozzle, yeah, here you go. This nozzle is designed around the philosophy of a cyclone or a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. At the eye of the storm, it's usually calm. At the eye of this nozzle here, we have zero airflow. Right. Now, where, where the airflow is, is back here on these veins. What happens is, and you'll see this when you weld, the smoke is like a, has a cyclonic effect, and it swirls around through these veins and back in, but it never crosses the orifice of the nozzle. How do we know that? The only way, way we know that is because we created some parameters and we created a set of tools. Those tools are right here. We have three parameters that we need to follow to get the best possible outcome. The first one is the airflow meter. You'll see here, this is like a, a ring. I'm going to slide the gun into here with the suction turned on in a moment. We're going to see when I turn this unit on.
say because the noise I'll turn the unit off. We need to be somewhere between 34 and 36 CFM. So 30, 34 to 36 is good. Um, that's in the green. If I'm down here in the red, lower down, I won't be pulling enough fume away. If I'm up here, higher than the green, I'll be pulling too much and I will have a porosity issue. Yeah. So this airflow meter is the first parameter of checking that we're on track where we need to be for airflow. The second parameter is the gas flow. This is probably familiar. You see gas flow meters already. Uh, we need somewhere on here to check the gas. I just checked it. I'm not going to pull it because it will pull the wire through. Mm. But we need 16 to 18 litres per minute or 35 to 38 CFH. Yep. I actually double checked it already. I haven't had to touch the gas. You were set perfectly at 16 litres per minute. So uh, we're going to try it at that. So that's the second parameter. Those two parameters, one and two, airflow meter, gas flow meter, we have control over. I have control over, you do as a welder. Your maintenance has control over. Any one of us can adjust those once we know what to do. The third parameter is weld positioning. Now, if we weld as we've been taught to weld, and in Canada, that's by CWA, CWB guidelines, you will know whether you should be pushing or pulling the weld, depending on the process of the welding that you're doing. But you should be somewhere within a 5 to 15 degree angle. Now, what happens is, Every welder welds differently. Mm -hmm. And I will not tell a welder how to weld. Um, it's a little bit like learning to drive a car. 20 years ago, I took my test. I did all the things that you should do by the book, and I passed my test. If I did a test today, I would probably fail. Because I drive how I drive. Welders weld how they weld. Yeah. It's just a, a, uh, a thing we see. However, the third parameter, well positioning, is important to get the best possible capture. So we say that's a discipline that needs to be discussed by the business and the welders. So if they want to get the best possible return on investment out of this technology, have a discussion about well positioning, what you were taught, to get the best possible capture. If we align all three stars, Airflow, gas flow, and well positioning. We will capture up to 95% of the fume at the source through this gun, in all positions at all times. Let's talk a little bit further about the gun itself. We've talked about the ergonomics, the weight, the porosity. This is a 45 degree angle neck. Most common for us. We also have 60 degree and 180 degree. We have three versions of guns. We have a 250 to 300 amp. We have a 400 amp. And we have a 500 amp. All the guns are air-cooled or water-cooled. Um, we have 100% duty cycle with this gun. I will show you when we get starting to weld how cool this nozzle keeps when you weld because you're not only sucking the fume, you're providing an airflow through the gun, so it creates a cooling effect on the whole gun. We'll talk about that more further. The gun itself, the one I have here today, is a 16 feet, 5 meter. We have four types of lengths. We have a 3 meter, 4 meter, 5 meter, and 6 meter. Or a 10, 13, 16, 20 feet width length. They are our standard lengths. The hose on the gun is not round. This portion here at the neck, back to this portion here, grows. It's a conical hose. The hose is actually very important because it's carrying that fume through the gun and we don't want it to, to drop out. And we want to remain a certain static pressure and a certain CFM as we are sucking out the fume. The hose is also crush resistant, I can walk on it, it will go back to normal. It is spark resistant and heat resistant up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. It's ribbed on the outside and it's smooth walled on the inside. 
So there's a lot of detail around the hose. On all guns, for the first two meters or six feet, we provide a leather Kevlar stitched leather protection. This is easily removable with the Velcro, but this does two things. One, it helps protect the hose life longer. But the number one thing is it helps when you're dragging it over here. It, it provides a smooth transition on the edge of metal. When we get to the end of the gun, this is what we call the Y branch. This Y splits. Now this gun is universal, meaning we can fit it on any welder. Today we're hooked up to a Lincoln. If you provided me with a Miller, or a Hobart, or an Esab, or a Fronius, I can, do, I can hook our guns up to that. We have a different back end adapter based on the machine that we're hooking up to. So for example, we have one type of gun that hooks up to Miller's, Lincoln's, Tweekos. We have another type that has a Euro back end, depending on what market we're in. So today I have hooked up the Tweeko number four back end adapter, which fits into this Lincoln machine. I've also hooked up the Quick Connect electrical cable to uh, make this work. Then on this Y, this is what goes to the vacuum source. So I'm going to put this away right now. I'm going to talk about the vacuum. From the Y branch of wherever you connect this gun to, we can run anywhere from as long as low as five feet up to 60 feet away in the shop per welder. We do not have to be this close, but we have different scenarios where some customers want the vacuum next to the welder, some customers want it somewhere down further down the shop or higher up or out the way. So this hose here from the gun, we can run up to 60 feet away. This unit I've brought today for you is a single welder unit, it's the Clear 2 W100. This version here is for one welder, so we're only hooking up one unit for one welder with this version. We have two other versions, we have a dual version that does two welders, so we can split out the back and do two guys, or we have a four gun that can do four welders off one unit. So we've got three different versions of the Clear O2 solution. So talking about this unit here, these units are available in three voltages, 220, 480, and 575. Today I brought a 220 volt unit for this demonstration. We have three connections on the unit. The first one is the power. So this power, we hook up to whatever power source you have. The second connection is this low voltage auto start stop clamp. This clamp I have put over the ground cable here. What this does is allows the welder not to worry about touching the machine. When you strike an arc, it senses the current, turns the machine on instantly. You do not have to come to the machine and turn it on or off. It's got its auto start immediate on and a delay off. So it's got a 20 second delay before it turns off from the last strike. So that means it allows the smoke to clear through the gun. Plus, if you're tacking, you're not turning the machine on and off. It's a very nice feature. The third connection is compressed air. If we con connect this to the compressed air line, we have the ability to self-clean that filter that's inside the unit. You do not have to worry about taking the filter out and cleaning it. It's got a differential pressure sensor in there, connected to a PLC, computer board. It knows when it needs to clean. It reverse cycle the pulses, the filter from the inside out. It pushes the dirt into a tray in the back of the unit. Now, that knows when to do that has two types of pulsing cycles. It has an online and an offline, meaning if, it, if you continue to weld and weld and weld during the day, it may start to pulse. At the end of the shift, or when the welder's finished, it will offline pulse for a longer time and clean that filter back out, push the dirt 
particular into the tray. Now, if we're welding on a single shift, eight to ten hours a day, that filter inside there, which is a five um, square meter filter, heparated, should last you with the compressed air connected up to one year on a single shift before you need to replace it. On a dual shift, it'll be six months. On a triple shift, three months. It's all pro rata. The only maintenance thing you have to do with this machine is every two weeks on a single shift, you need to take the back cover off, remove the, the dust tray, and dispose of the dust responsibly. The second maintenance piece is there is an um, inlet filter that cools down the blower. This is a simple, very simple um, square filter mat. That needs to be checked based on the shop air and how clean it is for incoming air to cool that motor down. That needs to be blasted off and or replaced maybe monthly. The machine itself has a VFD, a variable frequency drive motor, which means that you never compromise air quality at the gun. As you continue to weld and, and fill up the filter, and it continues to clean month after month after month, when we've set the airflow where we need it to be for the right CFM at the gun, the VFD variable frequency drive motor will take over and it will continually climb as it needs to as the filter degrades. So that from month one to month 12, you have the same airflow at the gun. The unit has the manual controls. We can, we can adjust them, we can turn the machine off, we can turn it on, and it has audible alarms, it has a light that flashes if it wants to go into fault mode, if it senses the filter's damaged, ripped, not put back in properly, or overloaded, it will tell you. It will also protect you by shutting the machine down. There are multiple um, different configurations of flashing of lights, etc., that we can tell you what those codes mean, if there's a fault. The unit itself is very portable. It's on four wheels, lockable, as standard, However, some people order them without wheels. You can order with wheels, with no wheels, or with crane hooks on the top if someone wants to crane and move them along. Very portable, it's 100 pounds, very simple piece of equipment. Overall, that's the story of the fume extraction source capture fume gun. Our goal is for you to weld and you to go home at night and be safe. We don't want you to be inhaling manganese, hexavalent chromium, galvanile, zinc, all these harmful particulates that can hurt us. And the idea is that you capture the problem at the source when you weld. When you weld and you capture that fume, not only do you protect yourself, you protect everyone else in the shop. Because now that fume didn't migrate and stick on all the walls, the ceilings, and inside our lungs. Are you ready to weld? Sure. Yeah, go ahead and uh, strike an arc and do a 16-12, see how it goes. I might do some adjustments. duty cycle and air cooled. Number one, that's a safety feature. Yep. I'm not going to burn myself, it's cold. Number two, which is a huge one, we're experiencing extended consumable life. Yep. We're not getting so much heat stress on the tips, tip adapters, diffusers, nozzles. So actually, okay, it's not that good for us because the consumption of consumables goes down, but it's good for you guys because they last longer. You're not changing them so often. These are staying cooler. 
easier to clean. That was right after you welded. That's pretty amazing. So I've got that cranked up. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to, I want you to do another six inch. I want to just double check it. I'm just going to do. I want to show you something. So just, just keep welding from here to here, yeah. Okay. And don't worry about me pulling it off and walking behind you. Okay. You just let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. You ready?
cloth at that time. Sorry. Okay, so what we're going to do now, John, is I want to show you how much human dust you're actually pulling out by using this. So I'm going to put this cloth, I'm going to do two tests. I'm going to put on the hose, you're going to weld for 10 seconds. And then we're going to take it off, then we're going to do another while at 30 seconds. You're going to see smoke rise because I'm blocking the hose. That's not the point of this test. The point is how much we're actually pulling out of that gun. For a few in particular. Is that okay? Okay, I will set this up, I'll set the timer up, and then I'll tell you to stop. Do you mind to to move this here, like kind of? Yeah, that's good. Let me check this camera. Yeah, this looks amazing. And I will go. From... Yeah, I'm good. You want to uh, video me doing this too? One sec. Okay. Ten second well. I will. I will tell you when to stop. Okay. You tell me start and stop. Ready to go when you are. Now you're Now we're going to do a 30 second weld. It's quite long weld, but just keep welding for the whole length probably. Okay. Ready when you are. Okay. Mind my language. This is the result, John. This is 10 seconds of your welding. This is 30. You can see how much more particular. Now, you imagine eight hours. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'll tell you what's a really nice feeling is after two weeks when you remove the tray and it's full, three, four inches of particular weld dust, it's a very nice feeling. Yeah. Because now if you didn't go all across the shop, your walls, your ceiling, you didn't breathe it in, you collected that problem and it's all. That's amazing. And that just gives you some proof from your own welds of what you just pulled out in 10 seconds and 30 seconds. You get to keep this as a souvenir. I don't feel the show the way that one. Should be wanting me to quit. Wow. Yeah, it's a reality. It's very interesting. That's not coming true. That's just that's what you can't do. Yeah. Pretty amazing, eh? That's, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm quite impressed. It's lightweight. It's, it's uh, very ergonomic. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, 
Thank you very much for your time. You are very welcome, you sir. Much appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Today we did the demonstration with the 7XE extractor. We also have the 8XE big extractor and we have the 8TE TIG extractor. All of these options connect to the Clearo 2 extraction units. If you would like a physical demonstration in your facility with your welders, wherever you're located in Europe, in the UK or North America, go online translos.com and click on the demo request button. Thank you.